Hello and welcome to 365 Days Towards Racial Change. My name is Tomlin's Nyback. We're talking about black issues in America. We're talking about whites, people in the extreme, in their extreme behavior, in their uh, domination in America. Not all, but a good many of them. And how that dynamic continues to play out here in America. Uh, we're talking about vulnerabilities. We're talking about people, uh, black people being uh, disregarded, disrespected, all of the above here in America. Two thoughts uh, emerge as I continue this project. The first part is uh, for the black mind, is it being perpetuated um, as a, you know, uh, feelings and sense of uh, ignorance, vulnerability in this land being perpetuated from generation from generation to generation and on and on. Roots in slavery and racism back in the mid, well, we'll say even back as far as the 1400s. And does the white mind continue to express itself in America being passed along from generation to generation uh, through um, education, conditioning, all these things. Now, the second thought, that was the, that was the mind of America. The second thought is for uh, my burden for financial literacy, for blacks to understand how they, how their funds are being used, what's going on with their money, understanding the, using their disposable income, uh, with groups hostile uh, to black success, participation, growth, that groups that see blacks as nothing more than consumers and wants them to be, um, you know, drones out there still working on a plantation and bringing in uh, the fruits of their labor to enrich others. We see a lot of uh, clever devices all through history, slavery being overt, but, you know, in the uh, abolishing that, in the wake of that, you see white majority still engaging in little, petty, tiny uh, acts of, of subterfuge to keep blacks uh, kind of in line and in a locked and frozen in a certain space. I'm... Uh, Educated on these issues by a man named Dr. Anderson, Dr. Claude Anderson, and uh, he's he can talk more eloquently on these issues than I can. First book I read a bunch of his books. First book I read was a Black History Reader. I want you to get these books. If you get one book, get this one. This will jar you from any complacency and educate you about the real plight of uh, blacks in America. Very important book. Black Labor, White Wealth, Search for Power and Economic Justice, and his national plan to empower black America, Powernomics. You can find Dr. Anderson at powernomics.com and the Heritage Institute in Washington, D.C. Um, you look behind me, you see the hashtag us two symbol, you find uh, black women coming together, conversing there, supporting each other. Go to Black Enough, B L A G G E N U F, uh, for other sources. It's kind of black Facebook. And uh, you can come here, start your own video series, find your flavor here on the World Wide Web. Uh, also, we take a fictional look. We're going to be coming up back to Uncle Tom's Cabin very soon see how little tom is doing and uh stay up with the life of a slave uh, the tom kind of start he starts in kentucky um where slavery is almost uh, uh civilized and then now he's heading south where it gets a little more intense we're going to find out how all that unfolds. Today we're still in Powernomics and we're not necessarily doing a series. Uh, we're just doing some review. We're on a lot of this stuff. 
through this year's review, always bringing to uh, recollection and rehashing uh, stuff we've been over. Uh, but like uh, some things, especially new information, you know, repetition is, is going to be one of the keys to making it stick here. And uh, we're talking here, um, uh, coming out of Powernomics, and uh, Dr. Anderson, he, he cites kind of uh, three major impediments to black self-sufficiency and, and competitiveness in America, maldistribution of wealth, uh, inappropriate black behavior, um, and uh, no national plan for success. <laughs> Those are three, three powerful um, issues that we can uh, kind of agree with as we move along. Today, we're going to focus on the first one, that and it's it takes up the bulk um, of his first chapter. It's a big one: the maldistribution of wealth. And it's the biggest one because you need money to get around, to maneuver, to. Um, to participate, you know, and uh, you'll find, especially black folks, you'll find so many people with a crowbar at the, the wallet, you know, on my wallet. Everybody's at my wallet, or, you know, um, whether it's the government with some new plan that they, it appears that they're helping me out, but they just taxed me. <laughs> and made a law to, to tax me and, and uh, cripple me financially. Um, I've had some I had some bad business dealings myself with a vehicle I was paying off and I wasn't watching, watching and these financial Jethro's just got all in my bank account and it really screwed me up, crippled me bad. Uh, for you, I'm just recovering mentally <laughs> from that incident. It's a, well, it's a simple story, but we'll, we'll go into that later. But uh, um, what we'll find is um, that it's consistent, you know, this, this attack on black wealth. You know, white wealth, it, it kind of self-sustains, it generates and it has some volition. A black wealth, our money goes out and we see very little of it back. And those three pillars, they, they're going to feed one another to a degree. You, know, you don't have money, therefore your lifestyle is uh, compromised. With that compromise, you ain't thinking about maybe long-term goals and plans. You're just trying to make ends meet from day to day, uh, week to week. <laughs> All right. Um, so uh, some of the antidote is knowledge. Again, we talk about that a lot here having some knowledge and being um, very deliberate in what we feed ourselves, how we move. These, uh, you know, technology is great on the one side, is access to information, knowledge and all that, but it's also a distraction, you know. How many, um, how much work are we getting done versus games we're downloading? I'm a gamer, you know, I'm guilty of it too, but I, I'm doing my best to curve and balance uh, some of that time and that energy in there. Um, financial literacy, um, uh, getting some financial tools, understanding uh, just the statements, business statements, terms, leverage, leverage margin, you know, not, not you don't even have to be stock terms, uh, real estate terms, anything to get us going so so that we know how money works. Therefore, we're less, uh, you know, we have, there's less potential for us to waste it. Like I, I've wasted so much money. Wow. Because I, you know, I thought money was to bring me pleasure. Well, yes, it does. But there's a responsibility with it. That comes first. Had I put that first, I'd be in a different place. I wouldn't even be making these videos now, I'm sure. Um, 
we talked uh, yesterday about uh, structuralism being an underlying source of this uh, inequalities, especially the maldistribution of wealth. And it comes out that way because whites have monopolies going. And whites have just control. And whites are always in position. Whites have paved the way of how we interact economically. You know, you know, it, you know. That's a, these other groups. Some of the groups hostile to black wealth and prosperity need to watch their back as well because they are following along in the wake of white success. They they seem to have a preference and whatnot. Well, but there, they need to be uh, mindful and circumspect that they don't actually participate like whites as whites. You know, they are their group doing well, but not they're not whites. You know, little tidbit out there. Uh, we want to be uh, mindful about this, this structuralism. It is. Uh, you know, one of, all through history will find a lot of things, especially if you if you read the Black History Reader, um, you find some incidents, you find the Freedmen's Bank, you find slavery, yeah, okay, we, we know that. But then as slavery diminishes and we, we move into different, you know, move on into different eras, uh, you find the Freedmen's Bank issue uh, where blacks uh, were trusting uh, agencies to invest their money and all that, but that was, they got ripped off and there was uh, little or no reparations for that. Reparations language to begin with, 40 acres of mule, $100. Um, Dred Scott decision. Uh, black man has no rights that a white man will uh, respect. Uh, I cite Brown v. Board of Education as uh, an integration issue, you know, instead of blacks being um, forceful and mindful, mindful to get their own education, uh, they saw the white school and they worshiped the white school as the pillar, so they in integrated in there. And same with the buses in the, in the whole 60s thing like that. You know, it's the same like, uh, take a child who is uh, homeschooled. Uh, you'll find this uh, it's probably more especially prevalent with um, Christian circles and things like that, where, where the parents want to really have a hold on the education. You uh, maintain the, the minimum standards of the state, but you can uh, indoctr use your own indoctrination, your own beliefs there in the classroom. And that, that's what blacks uh, should have done. But hindsight 2020, we'll, we'll, we'll talk again about some of the issues between uh, civil rights and social integration and the failures that come from that. Uh, about this structuralism, that you know, something out of the book here, the structural inequalities of race can only persist if the historical origin of white control of wealth, resources of power remain unknown or ignored. And this is this is like the, the grassroots ground zero. I don't I don't see myself getting too far away from the issue of education and uh, alleviating uh, denial here in America for the black people. It's very uh, challenging to get us off that point. So that, that's going to be my, uh, kind of my mission here uh, because blacks haven't organized. There are organized black groups, but no, no one is quite at the um, it's coming at it from the angle of Dr. Anderson. I think he's really cornered it and nailed it as far as what blacks need to do. Uh, so, um, you know, look out for uh, 
ignorance and apathy and how that allows this uh, disease in America to fester. You know, whites are going to move away, suddenly open up the doors of their heaven and let us in. And, uh, and, and we got to get kind of get away from whites all up in, all over everything. It's, it's, it's disturbing. I'm kind of getting disturbed by that. You know, they, they place themselves in a position as uh, they appear the end and be all of civilization. And that's just not true. And they disregard the contributions of other peoples and races. Or, or they, they minimize them or bring them under uh, their control. Here's another quote. According to records, the majority society compiled its wealth by using a simple economic principle. The industry of slavery produced a 1,500% return on investment without the burden of wages, employee benefits, and taxes, lifetime profits produced by slaves were passed on to slaveholders, heirs, and their heirs, heirs, wealth accumulated for white society, while poverty accumulated for blacks. You know, that, that's a, a statement. Uh, we can put that in the financial literacy toolbox. You know, some of these, uh, you know, I've been through the, uh, the Deep South and, uh, and then seeing those, the plantations and the, the pillared homes and stuff like you see, like maybe going with the wind and stuff like that. That's real stuff. And, um, you know, those families, if they're adroit with their money, sustain from generation to generation and uh, maintained those, those that wealth and you know, kept that money kind of close to the best, close to home. And, um, you know, when the blacks were free, they just turned them out. You know, uh, I don't have a big database of blacks receiving, you know, 40 acres and a mule and a hundred dollars and stuff and the reparations and whatnot. Uh, but you, you've got this whole community society of people in America crippled financially here and uh, you know when talk of redistribution you know uh, sharing comes up the first thing you hear is they quickly jump on the socialism uh, bandwagon and they use that word uh, you know to, to, to get the argument going and and, you know, instead of keeping it uh, kind of close to home base where we're only saying, like, dude, you've got, kajillion, you've got a kajillion dollars. It's, you ever think of uh, sharing some of that? You know, we're not looking, well, we're not looking for a handout. The blacks have earned whatever they're asking for, whatever... Uh, comes in the conversation by way of reparations is not something, uh, you know, it's not like going to the welfare office. You know, we only want uh, what is our due. You know, our ancestors broke their backs out there. Our people um, starve or were exposed, um, left in poverty sequestered in certain areas, you know, and sequestered in ways like where we couldn't, couldn't be too far from any source of sustenance, you know, and then even when we did participate, we got just enough so we could get there and back and, um, you know, and just do the same thing over and over, be on a treadmill. Robert Kiyosaki calls it the rat race. Um, but, you know, just, just treading, going nowhere, going nowhere. And, you know, that, that's so something that happened with me, uh, in my life, you know, I'm like, man, you know, uh, okay. You know, I understand drugs and alcohol had an impact. 
I can totally place that firmly into the mosaic of my life. Uh, but then I'm finding like, you know, now when I'm sober in my right mind, holding the job, keeping a dollar in my pocket, well, now I'm still on a treadmill. I'm still not going anywhere. You know, well, I might as well go get drunk, huh? No. No, I'm through with that. But, uh, you know, I'm finding, okay, society kind of told me in glaring terms, okay, this is an issue, this alcohol drug thing. And uh, so then you, you, I arrest that behavior. I get, you know, get with that. But I'm still jammed up. I'm still frozen here in the space in America. That America makes it appear as though it is the the only factor for putting me, for allowing me to rise up. And that's not the that I found out that's not the case. You know, it, it's important not to drink and use drugs, but the not drinking and using uh, does not propel one vertically upward in American society, especially black folks. You know, so you know, I had to come out of that conditioning, that brainwashing, and say, you know, there's there's something, there's got to be something better, something else that I need to be doing. Uh, if I'm going to come up and, and maneuver a lot better, I don't handle a ball. I don't have a talk show. I don't handle a game show. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. I'm glad for various achievements. Uh, but we've got to be real here. You know, my success shouldn't be predicated on my ability to entertain white folks. Come on, I got. There's got to be. Uh, paths to prosperity have to be much more equitable than that. Uh, you know, let's let's take black folks seriously. Uh, we have minds. We contribute. We we can bring solutions and whatnot. Just we're after uh, you know, shaking off the, the chains and the white domination that's going on here in America. Another aspect of the maldistribution of wealth is how um, solving the problem for blacks through money is diluted with other groups crowding in. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot of out groups in America, uh, but we want, you know, blacks have to have an exclusive message, exclusive attack, because what happens is you know, the government will have maybe a war on poverty or, uh, you know, some, I don't know, some, some new approach to, to appear to, to want to help, but specifically black folks rise up, participate and, and live better. Uh, but when um, the government tries to put itself in that position, all these other out groups quickly come in and elbow out uh, black folks. See, other groups, LGBT, Hispanics, uh, disabled, to uh, there are big, there are the big, big three uh, that I can think of right off the top of my head. You know, they have a preference in America. They get recognition, they get recognized. People uh, want to be involved with them, want to. Um, help them, uh, but to, to be exclusively, help blacks exclusively, uh, America has a real problem with coming to terms with doing what's right for black folks in, in that regard. You know, you find, you know I'm, I'm looking at uh, the DREAM Act and DACA and the things going on at our southern border. And I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not feeling it, you know. They, it's like, wow, man, I'm, I'm watching heaven and earth get moved for uh, so many other groups of people. And then Dr. Anderson talks about 
this, you know, these these other people, these other groups, boy, they it's like they got a magic wand. They got to pass right into um, the 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 inner workings of how to get supported in this nation. Uh, yet black folks are discriminated in workplace, businesses, a lot of stigma, discrimination going on, even in this modern age, you know. Um, you know there's still there's a guy dragging um, uh, like biracial or, or colored children on the bus and being rude uh, on the school bus, you know, put, putting that, uh, those planting those seeds of pressure uh, in those young minds, you know, white man controlling the bus, you know, is giving, you know, putting you through it as you're going to get some education, you know, and that being, becoming normative uh, in the minds of those children that he's abusing, you know. So I'm so glad, you know, technology here, which cuts both ways in this, in this way, you know, I'm glad we have our, so many cameras and cell phones and prevalence uh, of surveillance, degrees of surveillance, you know, where we're getting towards 1984, but uh, what are you going to do? You know, it, it does work out for the good uh, sometimes. Uh, so there, there's a dilution. Um, Dr. Granderson has another quote here, uh, Poweronomics, page 9. And he says, neither the U.S. government nor a social conservative have offered a public explanation for including gender, ethnic, class, Spanish-speaking, and disabled groups in a program that supposedly paid the nation's debt for blacks. So, you know, he's, the context he's talking about is, uh, I think it's Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty back in the 60s and all that. And, and you know, I you know, I can imagine the black folks reaching out for these funds supposedly allocated, and um, you have, uh, you know, paperwork, barriers, lethargy, and stuff. You know, but but you got uh, Asians, maybe not the LGBTQ at that time, uh, but Hispanics, disabled, other groups flooding in. You know, this huge pot that says for black people, but uh, it's quickly, you know, distri distributed to everybody but blacks. And, uh, you know, it's just, that's just wrong. You know, we see it. Uh, Dr. Anderson, he's got some, uh, there's some other places in, in, in the books uh, that I showed you where he talks about, um, uh, other people, everyone except blacks, getting preference for like uh, government contracts and some of the uh, some of the state-run uh, contracts and things like that. Uh, it's it's troubling. It's troubling, but it's real. Um, get your education. Understand. You know, hang around and keep hearing. Uh, the message, if you're not going to get the books or anything, I appreciate you being here. But I, I hope, you know, we get to that point, especially uh, black folks, where we just have a hunger for more, more information and more motivation um, to make some uh, real, true, lasting changes in our own lives. It's a long way to go, so I'm, I'm in my mission is probably not going to go beyond informing and educating about uh, the roots causes of this. You know, but uh, it's a very problematic message with uh, little commentary on solutions. Uh, but that that's where it starts. That's where you start the fundamentals. Of, you know, why this dynamic exists is important here for us. It's day 139 out of the way. I'm Tomlin's Nye back. That's 365 days towards racial change. I will see you tomorrow.